it's Jane from the Salty Tribe Company and Salt and Light Catholic Homeschool. So this is the uh, video where I'm showing you the required materials. And I'm gonna go through the core requirements, which is for all grades. Um, it would only be for your pre-K and kindergarten if they're joining an older sibling, unless you just wanna do this with your pre-K. It might be a little much for them for that age range. Um, we don't start history until fourth grade, but anyways, this is gonna be the core requirements for all grades. And then I will show you the required books for if you're teaching a child to read or they're dyslexic. Um, and then if they're in the um, middle school, the required books, and then high school, the required books. We'll see how it goes. Let's see how long this is. If it doesn't get too long, then I'll put it all in one video and that'll make it easier. So requirements, uh, a rosary. This is a focus for this year. Make sure everyone's got a rosary. This one I got from West Coast Catholic. It's gorgeous, but any rosary you have or free rosaries, we have a, a bunch of them now. I, I have a weird obsession with collecting rosaries and Bibles. Um, so that's one requirement. Another one would be a Catholic Bible. So this one is just one of my pocket-sized, like travel size ones. It, it stays on my bedside table so I can quickly reference scripture. I love flipping through pages of a Bible, guys. I'm just, I love the way it feels to flip through a Bible. So um, this one I got from um, christianbook.com and my kids each have one with their names are on them in gold foil. And it was inexpensive. I think it was like 11, $15, between 11 and $15, I can't remember. So um, history for year um, two is a continuation from year one. Again, you don't have to have done year one if you or didn't want to study that time period. This is uh, like the Middle Ages forward to modern times. So the book that we're using um, is, books that you're using is the Young People's Book of Saints, which I just referenced to the Book of Saints. So it's like the second half of this book is basically what we're doing this year. This book is for free on formed or you can buy it printed. It's linked for you. Along with that book for history is The Church Rocks. This is like the the best book I could find on an overview that's not so deep. Because remember, when we go through, or if you're new, you don't know this, but we're going through uh, regular history from a Catholic perspective. This lays that foundation for, and it's packed, packed, packed with information in here. So we're doing the second half of this book. And then when we go into um, the history, the regular history, you'll know where everything kind of lays because they have these amazing timelines at the beginning that um, is noted in the guide to make sure you go over these because it has what's going on in the rest of the world, which is so fascinating what's going on at the same time the church was being built. So, or the church was growing. So, those are the history. For science this year, it's marine and ocean science. This is for all grades as well. All of these are. So this is the um, Ocean Anatomy book. I love these books. We use them. This is by Julia Rothman. Um, we just, we love the pictures in these books. Yes, this helps us make our art notebook, notebooking pages, but it has some facts and all of that in when to read it is in there. I'm not sure if I just, did I flip through this book? Sorry. There's some pictures. The stories are short, just a few pages usually. And my kids use these as inspiration for their art notebooking pages as well. So all of the books that we use, that's what they use to make their art notebooking pages. Okay, back to science. This is the Marine Science for Kids. Love this book. Like it's color, it's got experiments, it's got everything all in it. I did link an optional um, ex experiment kit um, that you can do with your kids. My kids love it. Uh, we haven't done the last few experiments, I don't think. So, but it tells you in the guide that I wrote when to do what, which ones, and um, maybe some tips to kind of shortcut it because like you you can probably just buy like Rice Krispie Treats to make the coral instead of like making Rice Krispie Treats. I mean, unless you really like doing that. Like I don't, I don't have time to do that. <laughs> so, um, Anyways, so I love this book. It's it's just, it's beautiful. It's interesting. My kids love this one. And yes, we use this all the way up through high school because it is, um, this is the, the, the jump off point. So even if you only have high schoolers, yes, you're still using these books. They're old enough to research more information if they need to. But this is a jam packed course with lots of videos and links and stuff that I added to it in the guide to accompany this. So this is the this is the core and then we add in this and then there's more in this. The science course, I forgot to say this in the other video. The marine science is I think it's 
30 weeks, 31 weeks, 31 weeks and or 30, 30 or 31 weeks. I can't remember now. Um, and then what you do is you, cause nature science, we moved from year two to year three, uh, nature science two. And the reason we did that is because I wanted it to be a deeper study, but I didn't want to skimp on the ocean and marine science. So it goes to week 30. And then for the last six weeks, what you're going to do to start preparing for year three, which is nature study two. So it has right here what to do when you get to the end of the ocean marine science book. So next, this goes with the rosary. This book we are using to deeply understand the scriptural ties um, from Old Testament, New Testament in um, the Bible. Uh, and the rosary, the, the Bible on a string, that's what it's called, the rosary. And it's just, I love, first of all, I love how big these pages are. And I love these beautiful watercolor paintings. Aren't they beautiful? They're just beautiful. So, just giving you a flip through so you can see what this book looks like. There's another one in the series too that we're going to probably use in year three. I'm still debating, but it's, or it might be an optional one that we do around Easter, but it's, um, the, the Stations of the Cross one. So, and there's um, more discussion, study and discussion guys back here. So you can use this if you want to add in more. And this is for that weeks 11 through 14. That's noted in the guide. It tells you exactly when to use this. All right, so that's it for the core. I mean, you need this and those. So those are the, the core subjects there. That's faith, history, and science. So next, one more component of faith that would be required, obviously, would be a catechism. Here's a few samples to show you. Um, this is, which one? Number two, and it tells you in the guide which one to use for which grade and ages and what to do when you get to the end of it and they're not old enough for the next one. So we use the Baltimore Catechism. We're old school here. We gotta, gotta learn the basics here. So, and we even read the Pius X um, Catechism as well. So. Um, we go all the way old school, but here's um, what it looks like. It's There's additional scripture. When you do your lesson, you do the question and answers. You go through them together, or your child can read them, and then you can have uh, discussion time uh, with these questions here. And the scriptures to look up, read from the Bible right there. Like, this is a packed lesson, um, but that would be, it's in the schedule when to do your catechism lesson. So this would be, um, I can't remember what grades were because it's on here, isn't it? Nope, just says number two. I can't remember. I think this is the middle school one. Um, and then here is number three. And uh, we use the one from Seton. And the reason we do is because it's beautiful. So Lorelai did this one in eighth, ninth grade. She's in 10th, 11th grade. So that's what that one looks like. I love this one. Seton did an excellent job with that. And then when you have 10th through 12th grade and for yourself, you can follow the same guy. That's what I'm doing. Um, you just, this is the, we're, we're just using, just get the catechism, whichever catechism you have of the Catholic church. And then of course, like for fun, since we're studying Pope Pius X, we are reading the Pope Pius X catechism. So there's that on catechisms. Then if you have a child that is learning to read or is dyslexic, I don't have the letter tiles to show you, but here are your options. So we love McGuffey readers. These are the core. This is the primer. This is the first eclectic. I love the hardcover. I love how vintagey it looks um, because it is. It's really old in the 1800s. Here's what it looks like. I have in the guide exactly how to do this. You have to do the lessons as written. You have to use the books properly in order for them to work. That's, it's just, there's no way around that. So it just, it works really, really well. It's extremely simple and minimal. This is where you get spelling words right here. Um, and they can spell them out with letter tiles, which I don't have right this second because some of my children are using letter tiles at this moment. Um, but go in order. Um, these are for free online as well. So if you need to know where to start with a dyslexic child, because they're going to be in a lower level than their grade or age, what you do is you find them online and you just start with the first lesson. Yes, even if you know they can read that. Let them read it. The first time that they need your help with a word, a sound, or anything, if they need your help at all, that's the lesson you start on, period. No if, ands, or buts, that's where you start. And then you go through and you do each lesson. Anyways, it's all in the guide, I wrote it down. <laughs> but I don't want this video to be too long. So you just go through the eclectic readers. Once they're able to do these on their own, 
like, and they're getting through it pretty quickly, you can stop. You don't even have to finish the whole series. But once you get going, and, like, I don't think, like, Everett didn't, he only did, I think he just did this one. Because he, he's been able to read since he was two. But then I have a dyslexic child before him, and she needed, I think she did the primer, the first, and the second. Maybe even the third. I can't remember. But once she, like, had the hang of it, we were just done. This is an, is an option. So if you, if you, I don't know, want this one, it doesn't matter. They're used the exact same way and they're almost the exact same lessons. This is primer and book one. So this is kind of like these two books in this one and it's Catholic, so that's cool. But it's, let me show you the lesson so you can see that like a fat cat, like it's almost the exact same lessons, but you do them the exact same way. There's no difference there. So just giving you a flip through what that looks like. Okay. And then an optional add-on is these uh, readers from The Good and the Beautiful. Again, in the guide, it tells you which ones to use for which grades. These are full color. Not all of them are color, but the, um, the first several are. I love the color pictures. I'm obsessed. So these actually, it's crazy, but they actually go really well with the McGuffey readers. Like the same words that you're studying in the McGuffey readers come up in here, which is why I specifically chose these ones. Um, because they just, the words match up. It's crazy. I don't even know how that, Jenny did a great job. Anyways, um, yeah, those are the readers. If you have a middle school child, there are four, four required books for literature. These are the books. So you can use um, a couple of these, you know, for a read aloud for younger grade. You can read all of these aloud and discuss. You can just... Give these to your children and let them read them. I've previewed them. You can preview them if you would like to make sure that it's right for your family. Um, so the books are Number of the Stars and in the guide it tells you exactly when to read what. There's also a little bit of a literature guide on what to discuss or what to do with the books. So Number of the Stars by Lois Lowry. That's what that looks like. It's a pretty quick read if you have a, a, a reader. They can probably read this in a day or two or in a week if they're whatever or but anyways it tells you exactly when to read them and how approximate long to take it so if you need to finish it up reading it out loud for your child you might want to do that here's the crusader king i think this is one that's on formed i linked it i'm sorry my brain can't remember everything that you need to know is inside the curriculum so um this is an excellent book i can't wait to read this aloud to the kids because i've read all these <laughs> so this is an excellent book so that's what that looks like that's how thick it is. Okay. Next, so excited, The Princess Bride. I used, I hate like dust jackets, but I use it this time. This is how much you don't read of the book, okay? This is like his long, he's like a really wordy person. And like, he just went on and on about, this is not required. Don't read that, just skip it. Chapter one starts here. This version of this book that I got has pictures and I love pictures, so that's why I bought it. Even though um, you could definitely go with a cheaper version, but the pictures were so pretty. Like, look at that. Hold on. I'll show you some more. If you've seen the movie, which we are super huge fans of the Princess Bride movie and this family, if you've seen the movie, then this is the script, basically. it's There's very little extra in here that's not in the movie. Um, my kids are so excited about reading the book. They were like, what? There's a book? They didn't know. Um, but yeah. I just wanted to flip through and kind of show you the pictures because just in case you want this version or you wanted to see what it looked like. It's so hard to buy books online sometimes because I like to flip through things. I have to touch it. I guess I'm tactile. So that's going to be a fun read aloud for sure. But my middle school daughter is wanting to read it like now. So she's already um, starting on this book. And then the a stage full of Shakespeare stories. If you haven't read Shakespeare with any of your children, um, there's a guide in here for different ages. You can get this for all ages. I have it down as a required middle school read, but if your high schooler still hasn't read, is unfamiliar with Shakespeare, they need some. This is important. Um, so it's important because um, they need, so there's a lot of movies and I've, I've listed some that you may or may not um, allow for your teenager to watch. Um, I think my oldest has seen them. Um, it's like 10 Things I Hate About You and what's another one? I can't remember. I wrote, it's in the, oh, she's the man. She's seen those movies with me. Um, and they are based off of Shakespeare stories. And there are a lot of movies that are like that. There's also West Side Story, which is uh, Romeo and Juliet. So it tells you which 
stories in here to read. You're not going to read all of them unless you want to. If you want to, go for it, man. Like the curriculum's not dictating to you. You can read whatever you want. But we have specific stories that are for different age groups. And uh, yeah, so I just like this one because it's colorful. I don't care if you have a bunch of teenagers. Pictures are fun. I'm 30 years old and I love pictures in my books. So, all right, next, if you have a high school student or a teenager. So if you have a middle schooler that likes to read, they can do these books too. My middle schooler um, is my dyslexic child, but she is also reading several of these books, not all of them, but the Theology of the Body type books, which are these books um, she is reading or has finished already. So um, I'm going to go through these. These are for the Theology of the Body course. So this is the ladies and gentlemen's course for the high schoolers or teenagers. So there's Pure Manhood. So if you have a boy, they read this one. If you have a girl, they read this one. Okay, so you can see that this one has been <laughs> read and this one hasn't because my son is too young for that. So they're just thin books. Um, they're too expensive on Amazon. Get them from Jason Everett and Christelia Everett's site. Um, it's awesome. And it's linked for you in the guide. Then there's uh, for the boys, the men, gentlemen, the Catholic gentlemen. This book is excellent. Um, this is also, it goes into family stuff too. So being a good father, being a good husband, these are just good for them to know for when they're older. And again, how to read the chapters, what to do at the end of each chapter is in the guide. Um, and they're going to be journaling through this as well as the ladies journaling through this with the girls one though. However, there are at the end of the chapters, right. the, the take action has these questions. And they can answer those in their um, journal or just write whatever it is that they were um, that they were learning about. So this is the ladies' book. Man, I wish I had this. Of course, I wasn't Catholic, but it's still an excellent book. <laughs> so I love those books. This is the theology of her body and the, the theology of his body. Both boys and girls will be reading both parts of this book. They have to read. So if they're a boy, they're going to read the boy part first, and then they're going to read the girl part, and then the girl. It's going to read this part first and then read the boy part. And I'll show you how that looks here. And there's videos that will go along with this that are on formed. Those are all linked. The mission of the man. This is, this is, I love this. It's so well written. It's not too long, not too wordy, but it's, it's all the important stuff they need to know. Now for literature for the high school grades, Rome Sweet Home. This is scheduled in the history in uh, year two here. Uh, this is the book that made me Catholic. Um, I just related so much to what Scott said. I love Scott Hunt. I think I've read every book, almost every book, many, many, many of his books now. But this is an excellent book. Now, if you're cradle Catholic, why, why would I have you read this? Because it is extremely important for your child to understand what Protestants think about their Catholic faith, where they're coming from. Because um, my cradle Catholic friends didn't realize some of the things that Protestants believe about the Catholic Church. Actually, many of them didn't didn't even know some of these things that we believed. Um, so this book touches on that. There's some promptings and some questions and discussion that is in here. So that's one of the books. Do I have all of them? Okay, I think I do. So Sword and Serpent. This is by Taylor Marshall. I love Dr. Taylor Marshall, but this book is um, a fiction book. It is excellent. I love this. I love this. This book stayed with me as I was reading it. I was, I was finding myself thinking about it. This uh, chapters aren't too long, um, but they're, it's an excellent story about St. George and the dragon. Um, the Power of Silence by Cardinal Seurat. I love his books. I think... Um, We'll probably have another book of his for year three for the high schoolers. This book is, I have this on audiobook. Um, and then I, I needed it in print just so I could copy down some of the things he was saying because <laughs> I needed to see it. So it's awesome. And there's some journaling that goes with this and dis or discussion. So that's what that looks like. Love this book. Man, I love Carlos. Oh, there he is. All right. And... One of my favorite C.S. Lewis books is the Screw Tape Letters. The annotated edition is absolutely required because you have to read these. These annotations are extremely important. Like this just says to J.R.R. Tolkien. But if you read this, you get the information behind that and why that's 
really cool thing to read. So all of the annotations are extremely important. You are gonna read the introduction. Please do not skip any page in this book. Um, you need all of them. So I'm just gonna give you what that looks like. So there's a lot of annotations. Okay, and then again, in the guide, it tells you when and how to read that. Okay, so for the high school books, I already went over it. The one that I was forgetting was this one, The Princess Bride. So the fifth book that I, um, that's for the high school required reading is also The Princess Bride. There's an overlap there with the middle school grades. Um, everyone should read it, so it's awesome. It's fun, it's a fun book. So I wanted to add in something fun, um, something about faith, something that has to do with history, something to grow them spiritually, something to grow their minds. That's what our focus is on literature when I pick them. It's still really hard to narrow them down to just five, guys. So because of that, I did add in, in the curriculum, if you're going through it, there are some optional books that are linked there. Some of them are for free on form to this one is. Um, some of these other ones might be, I can't remember. But um, if they are, they're linked. So this is The Blood Red Crescent, which I'm going to be, these are, we're reading these aloud, or I might just give them to my kids, we'll see. Um, St. Louis and the Last Crusade. Curie of ours and Pope St. Pius X. I'm so excited about reading these books. This book is so good, so good, but all these really are, also, are so good. So um, they're linked in the curriculum as well. So that's a lot of books, but it's by just pick what you need for your age of child. So I'm gonna do the pre-K um, in a separate uh, video because it's just easier that way for the people who, are, who just have that age. So, all right, hope that was helpful.